Amity has changed significantly from the scared and self-conscious person that she was at the start of the show. Not only has she fallen in love with Luce, but she's grown bolder and less afraid of disobeying her parents' commands. She's dyed her hair pink and she's become more rebellious. Instead of the submissive, perfectionist daughter her parents raised, Adelia now has to face a defiant teenager. How will Adelia respond to this? I can't imagine that she will respond well, and I would love for the show to really delve into the implications and the consequences of Amity breaking from her parents like she has. It has touched on this, but only superficially. I would like to go a lot more in depth, and who knows, it might. Let's delve into the topic of this episode. As I'm writing this, there are only two more episodes left in Season 2A of The Owl House, although I deeply hope that the insights I offer here, meager as they may be, will be sufficient that one can find uh, something relevant and valuable in this video, even after the entire show is finished airing. Speaking of Amity, we already know what her palisman is. It's a cat, as we saw in a little image that was leaked for this episode. And a cat palisman fits Amity. Her nickname is Mittens, and a common name people give cats is Mittens. In Eclipse Lake, Amity is joining forces with Ida and King to seek ingredients to help open the portal between the realms. Presumably, Amity's research on the topic of Philip Wittebane has paid off handsomely. Everyone has theorized that the ingredient that our team is going to be looking for is the blood of the Titan, and I for one see no reason to disagree. Anyway, the episode description warns of other maleficent forces trying to find this ingredient. I presume this is going to be Kikimora and other associates of Balos, but I really hope that Hunter is involved in this episode somewhat. For a character who has been hyped up so much by Dana Terrace and the production team, and for a character who seems, to my vantage point, to be so important to the overall plan of the show, he has only played a major role in two of eight of the episodes we have gotten so far, which I find rather strange. Now, I love a lot of the episodes we've gotten thus far, Hunter or no Hunter, but I would like to see him pop up in one of these episodes. I would like to see him make his presence known in either this episode or the next one, and I think the chances of that are pretty high. How will he fit into Balos' schemes? We have not seen much of Balos lately. And what about the most important industrialists on Balos' side, those being the Blights? If Balos and his crew are going after this ingredient, I am going to go out of on a limb here and say that Amity's parents are going to be involved in this chase as well. Amity will be on one side of the chase and her parents will be on the other, and they, or at least Adelia, will feel betrayed that Amity has gone against them again. I think Amity might be able to persuade Alador. He did seem at least amused at the conclusion of escaping expulsion, and he seems genuinely proud of Amity. Adelia seems like she would be a lot harder to convince, but who knows, maybe Amity will tap into something that we don't know about, some secret connection between her and her mother. As much as I do love the relationship between Luce and Amity, I would love to know more also about who Amity really is outside of this relationship, which I do not think we've gotten enough of. If I had my way, 
I would like an episode that was just Amity. No other characters. Kind of a Zuko alone style episode with her just trying to figure out her own identity and where she stands in respect to the expectations and ideals imposed on her by her parents. Now, do I think this is likely to happen? No, the show is moving quite fast at this point, and I don't think it really has time to take a step back and focus on Amity and her existential confusion. But an episode like Eclipse Lake might at least give us something similar in terms of an episode that focuses on Amity's interiority outside her relationship with Luce. This seems to be one of the few Owl House episodes wherein Luce is not a major player. So if the show focuses more on Amity because it has less Luce it needs to focus on, I hope that we get more information about Amity's relationships with her parents. Her break with her parents has thus far seemed a little perfunctory to me compared to how her parents' influence on her was built up to such an impressive extent in Season 1. The most obvious comparison is with Pacifica Northwest breaking from her parents and Gravity Falls. And while Pacifica Northwest is nowhere near as important to Gravity Falls as Amity is to the Owl House, I strangely felt like Pacifica's break with her parents was given a little more nuance and a little more sketching out. I got the clear sense that Pacifica wanted to rebel not just against her parents as people, but against the legacy they represented. The legacy of a small amount of rich elites exploiting ordinary people for fun and profit. Hamity just gives me the sense that she broke with her parents because she loved Luz and because she was tired of her parents controlling her. This is reasonable, of course. I'm not against it in abstract. I just wish that we got more details and more of a vivid sense of what her relationship with her parents is like. Amity's relationship with Luce is great on its own right, and it's also great in terms of offering a context through which to explore the person Amity has really blossomed into since leaving her parents and staking out a new identity for herself. But I'm still left to wonder in what form will the backlash to Amity's rebellion and her newfound freedom-seeking take? What will her parents do to try and punish her? I assume that they, or at least Adelia, will try to bring her back into the Blight fold. I don't think that they would be okay with the person she's becoming considering that this person is completely contrary to the person they were trying to make her be for her entire life. So much of the pathos about Amity's character for me was about her knowing the backlash that would result if she rebelled against her parents and then her still doing that anyway because she cared so much about the girl she loved and about the person that she herself, Amity, was trying to become. If we do not really see any significant backlash from the Blights, especially from Adelia, about the person Amity has become, then a lot of that pathos is therefore lost. Adelia Blight might not be as powerful as the Emperor himself, but she is probably at least as important to this world as the other Covenheads being arguably the most important industrialist in this world. She will make Amity face some sort of pressure for Amity's rebellion. Now, considering the extent to which Amity's relationship with Luce has solidified, I have absolutely no doubt that Amity will resist whatever pressures 
her parents try to exert on her to turn her back into the person she used to be. A lonely, scared little girl who had no one who really cared for her. But it would really demonstrate how much Amity has changed and grown as a person if she faces that pressure and triumphs over it. So that's a major reason why I would like to see something like a confrontation between Amity and her parents. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching The Owl House. It's always interesting. Sometimes it gives you a gleaming, just visually arresting, philosophically stimulating episode like episode 208, Knock Knock Knocking on Hootie's Door, and especially the Ida section of that episode. Just a surreal, gorgeously animated, very thoughtfully written meditation on trauma, regret, and identity. So who knows what the show will come up with next. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. I promise you that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.